So, so new for 92. New for 92. Ni- we didn't even do a new for 96. Oh, no. Thanks for listening to <laughs> new, new for 96. 96. <laughs> what if you add this to the beginning? No, we're going to keep it where it is. No, no, no. What if you add it to the beginning? It's already our mistake. New for 96. With your hosts, Kevin McCauley and Chris Wynn. But no one from NPR likes cars. Michelle Norris likes cars. That's true. You don't know that. You just wanted to say Michelle Norris. <laughs> uh, click and clack. Yeah. yeah. Oh, classic car people. They're retired and slash not I know. alive. I still think about one of their uh, puzzlers all the time. Which one? There was one and it was like, uh, no, allow me 12 minutes of exposition. Yes. It was like, you know, these two guys are working at a gas station. Yeah. Pumping the gas. Yep. And... Uh, as the car enters the parking lot, they know which side it's the gas tank is on yeah. every time without looking at the size of the car. Yeah. And the reason, the, the answer was because the muffler, like the exhaust tip, was yeah. the opposite side of the gas side. What is that true? It's tr- It was true before every single car had dual exhaust. Yes. <laughs> but it was, I mean, it was like a packaging thing, you know? So it's like, uh. oh, if the gas tank is on this side, the muffler is going to be on this side. I guess so. Yeah. I never really thought about it, that. It is, it is, like, it checks out pretty much all the time yeah, I'm on thinking about, traditional cars with, like, rear gas tanks. Thinking um, about, yeah, except, yeah, it does work, yeah, with rear gas tanks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking but about, like, now everything has the cars have quad or with. eight or. Yeah. Well, exhaust. then maybe it's on the side of the real exhaust tip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Because I. I love imparting the stupid pedantic knowledge of the arrow in the gauge mm-hmm. that tells you which side the door is on. Wait, which what are you what are you what are you talking about? What? It, on the gas gauge, on most modern ish cars, I think from the nineties and up, there is a little tiny arrow you, next are to you, Are you fucking with me? No. <laughs> do you not know this? Yes, I do. Oh whatever. <laughs> Ugh. Quality content. <laughs> We are imparting good consumer knowledge here, and you yeah. just messed it up. I know. Fine. There's no arrow. You cannot tell. No knowledge imparted. Mm-hmm. Anyways, fine. So, although there are some cars where that does not exist, and I get confused often. Yeah. Kind of. Not at all. Like, I don't know if, like, cars with digital dashes, like, the, that XC90 we were in, I don't remember if it had, like, Aside that the gas gauge was on. I think it did. It did, because we figured it out on one try. I think we guessed. I By the way, sometimes with left and right, I still do the Pledge of Allegiance thing, where I think, like, right this hand, that's the right side. Really? Sometimes. Oh, wow. <laughs> Your intelligence has just Your gone down. Your look of so... confidence in me as an adult has drain from your face like the confidence yeah um whatever i saw in your notes you had that xc90 i did about that and i had to did you see that that in china they the old you know you mentioned the old the xc classic yeah they still sell the old one i that blew my mind but it has a inline five it actually is a i don't know if they call it the t5 but it is an actual five cylinder it's a five cylinder it's a 2.5 yeah and it's funny because every volvo in the u.s is and it, probably Europe is a two liter four. Yeah, and we like, <laughs> I genuinely. So we when we went up to uh, Los Angeles for Luft Cult, we had a rental Volvo XC90, and it was a T6 Momentum, and I like I genuinely like I haven't paid attention. I love Volvos, but I love Volvos up until about the first gen S60R, and that's where like my interest kind of dropped off, and so. I completely glazed over the fact that they've gotten rid of all of their interesting mm-hmm. engines, and now it's just the same ubiquitous two liter four that's in every single car. The dream is alive. The dream of the one yeah. engine. And then, like, basically, it's just like a different tune. And well, I guess the one that we had was supercharged and turbocharged. Yeah, and then um, there's also a f- which is fev. and a fev, which is really interesting because I feel like the buyer of these cars like are so undiscerning about like what the engine actually does that. Volvo didn't even need to do any of this. Like, just have the packages for the interior, and that's all probably, that's necessary. Probably, but I mean, I think I think 
if you're going up against like all these like twin turbo German things, having a Maybe. little bit more scoot, you know what I mean? If they can do all this from one engine block, but say now we've got I, here's the thing that I, much I have I like the XC90 now. I didn't like it when it first came out because I was so in love with the first gen XC90 mm-hmm. that this car was just like too much of a departure for me. So, uh, but now I've grown it like. It's really grown on me. I really like it. I like the one that we had. Like, it was really comfy. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was a good city car. It was huge. Yeah, it was very big. Yeah, it was very large, especially for, like, uh, we always get the wrong car for Los Angeles. Uh, And this was fine. It parked itself. What was the wrongest car? I I mean, probably the Alpha 4C. (laughs) Yeah. It was just very rough and inconvenient. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. This one just, just felt so big on like small roads or roads with like street parked cars like when i was circling the block when yeah. you were in the store or something and i was like driving around and yeah. it was like it was just it just felt so tight but i wasn't also i wasn't really calibrated to the size you were like normal sized for every other car that's on la roads which is like a range rover or a g-wagon true and these are that xc90 is about the same size as... if we had the velar do you think it would have had better or worse visibility worse I'm almost, it's so much more think, like gun slit, yeah, like the windows. True. Like so, we were supposed to get a Velar, and uh, I always so we rented from Sixth Rental Cars. Which, if you don't rent from Toro, don't rent from anyone else. Like as far as a normal agency goes, because they have somewhat interesting. I mean, okay, they're not interesting cars. They're just better than like a Camry, a Corolla, or a Malibu. So, and they're all like yeah, you won't get stuck in a Cobalt. Yeah. However, like. Every single time I've rented from six, I've rented, I tried to rent like an S class, an E class, uh, a Velar this time, and each and every single time I get stuck in a Volvo, which is fine. They're very nice vehicles mm-hmm. for puttering around, but I did get, I liked the S90 when I had that. It's a really, it, we heard it's such an, oh, no, we didn't because we cut it out because you hated talking about the s90 but we're going to talk about the xc90 for one second i think we're done i think no. we covered it no okay wait but we should talk about for one second that that one of the longest living not really actually because i guess the the bug was the bug and the bus volkswagen bus were of the longest lasting production vehicles but the xc90 in the united states was what 12 years yeah. and it still continues to this day in china mm-hmm. where you can get it in a manual oh that's cool which is kind of cool which is also kind of strange for that market or maybe not i maybe i don't quite understand it but is there one i mean of all those ones of all those models that sold here for 12 years yeah. was there any that were durable was it like oh this is the no, one to get no they were all utterly completely <laughs> unreliable from the first day to the last <laughs> so amazing i know and i would i would love one like a t6 r design whatever like it's a good looking yeah oh thing. They look great. They look yeah great. but yeah i mean this i would and you know any xc90 owner out there feel free to uh comment ter at me but like i feel like that's in the same vein as owning like a 4.8 IS X5 or a Touareg V10 or it's yeah. just like constant troubles. But I've, uh, real quick, I rented from six and I've got a C class a few years ago and yeah. I got a three series a few years ago. Oh, yeah. It was an X drive. Yeah. 328. Yeah. And here's the thing. All these cars are like normal priced, like yeah, totally. same price as like a camera or something. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's so weird that they had an X drive. Although, where was that? No, that, that was, was in like, LA. Oh, that is really weird that they had yeah, an X-Drive It was there. in their Venice location. Oh, huh. Interesting. When my Cayman was Stolen. confiscated off the street yeah. from Turo, or my Turo came in, disappeared off the street, so yeah. I, rent, I walked to a 6 location <laughs> and rented a 3 Series. I remember you just texting me that the photo of the key and saying, this is all I have left of the car. I was at it's Lufka gone. Colt, I was at <laughs> Lufka Colt 3 carrying around the key to a 987 Cayman for a, and then for a car that had disappeared. Off the street, yeah. Like, if there were ever a horror story of, like, not just, you know, you didn't just crash it, you know, you didn't just, like, dent it. Like, it's gone. It's gone. And the funny thing is, when I called Turo, like, because it happened on, I guess it happened on a Saturday? I don't know. Yeah. I was there for like four or five days. I think this happened on a Saturday. 
and I didn't rent the car till like Monday. Like I basically didn't have a car for the weekend, but I kind of rode around with friends and stuff. But um, I called Turo and, you know, they're like, if you have an emergency, this. And I guess because of the way it was worded, I didn't think yeah. my car disappearing was an emergency. Like I had contacted the owner. I had yeah. done this stuff. I wasn't like, it wasn't like call the police. I had actually, I had called like the towing companies and stuff. Yeah. And I couldn't, I thought maybe I'd parked illegally. Um, but everyone was in the loop. I'd messaged Turo and they, you know, and, and whatever, but it was the weekend. So yeah. the Monday they're like, Oh, you should have called like the emergency number. Like this was a <laughs> severe situation. <laughs> yeah. It seems pretty bad when the car disappears. Yeah. Yeah. But I was also under the impression that the owner had GPS and taken it. Yeah. With his other key. But what may likely have happened is that it was repossessed. That's or what I think. Yeah. Or, or picked up for parking, maybe violations sp- or something. Past parking violations yeah. or something. I don't know. Either way, it wasn't there anymore. And it wasn't my fault yeah. because I, I got reimbursed and I got a credit. Yeah. But it was weird. That's I never thing. really got the full story because I, they, Toro couldn't tell me. Yeah. I like running from Toro, but sometimes, like, just the off chance that, like, weird stuff like this can happen. Oh. Just kind of. Oh, yes. You I want mean, to talk about weird stuff? Yeah. One more weird stuff. Go I'm on. Touring tomorrow, the Lexus LS. Oh, uh, yeah. That's and, an interesting choice. Well, it's a good choice. Yeah. It's like 49 bucks a day. Yeah. I need the car to drive from Boston to Rhode Island and oh, it's yeah. sit in a garage for two days. Yeah. And then... No, that's fine. Yeah, so, it's a good cruiser. So, Laura is experiencing Turo for the first time. Oh. And I'm like, I, I just want it to be normal. I don't want this to be weird. Yep. Anyway, the guy wants me to drop them off at his house. <laughs> no, get out. Really? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Okay, that's pretty weird. I know. That's what happened with the Cayman too. So maybe this is an omen. Oh my god. So he's picking up you at, he's picking you up at the airport. Yes. Okay. And then he's like, Can you drop me off on your way to Rhode Island, can you drop me off at the house? And like literally I had to look at the map because I was because <laughs> I, I don't know the geography of Boston and Rhode Island, so I'm looking at the map and it's like his house is yeah. like due north of the airport i'm like oh my god is rhode island not where i think and it's like no it is this is the opposite direction it's the opposite direction you're good i'm actually sitting... i look actually like looking at the traffic and stuff it's like the same time even with driving this okay. other way i'm just imagine this is amazing because uh i don't imagine that your wife enjoys uh strangers and there's going to be what i hope is a cartoonishly boston man like oh, yeah. getting into the car, like yeah, I just uh, take a ride over here at uh, yeah. Yeah, at the uh, AM PM. <laughs> so what are you doing in? Uh, yeah, what's you, what's uh, what's you doing in Rhode here? Island? Yeah, <laughs> that is amazing. Um, at least when we rented Chauncey, yeah. uh, which was a GLA forty five AMG, and it was the first time that I had to meet the owner because usually when we go to LA, it's at the Toro lot. Yeah, and. I've done that here in Houston, and I've met the owners because we don't have a central location for pickups. But that was kind of weird, too, because he was this unexplicably unemployed-looking man, whatever that means. And Why are you looking at me? <laughs> he just, Why like, are you pointing at me? hands us the keys to his GLA at um, the pickup area, and off we go. And he just like stood there, and I assumed that he just stayed in the airport for three days, and then <laughs> he yeah. was there when we got back. So. Yeah. Yeah, that was amazing. Toro. At least it's an adventure, for better or worse. It, it sure it's usually, is. yeah. The, well, the adventure part is usually the worst part, but. Yeah. Yeah. Should but we. Uh, let's get on with this. Jump into Luftgekult? New for. I put. Luftgekult. No, what is it? Neufdergult. Okay, this Dergult. isn't going to work out. Okay, let's yeah. check that out. Uh, yeah, so we were in Los Angeles this last weekend for Luftgekult 6. Yeah. Which took place at. Uh, Universal Studios, the back lot, which was a very interesting setting, yeah, to say the least. It was very cool. It was funny because when I was researching the story, because I did a couple things for Road Track about it, and I was researching the story, and I found, uh, like, the website, like the promotional website, where it's like if you're actually scouting locations, you can look at their you know, their online brochure of like, these are the streets we have. And so it's kind of yeah. cool because New York is not just, here's New York. It's like divided up. Actually, like part of it was part of it with the, the courtyard where those two rally cars were like the, yeah. the two looped rally cars, the yellow and white one, like that was like supposed to be London, 
There, you know, as oh. you said, there's modern New York, New York. There's there's West Village. There's Wall Street. There's like you know, there's all these things. There's the theater. Like it's all like different things. So yeah. it's kind of cool that it was all you know, it was all it was, just wide open. The th- uh, and like you kids could when going there, uh, you just can't help but be like slightly starstruck. Even oh, if it, totally. it's like it's so you know, I, I avoid like the tourist traps and whatnot, but like. Just being there, and you usually don't get to see that. Maybe you're on a tram, right? But we right. were like like walking amongst the set, and it's interesting because yeah, you you see like how small it looked really small. Like say for instance, the Back to the Future clock tower it looked it did so yeah. tiny. If compared you look to online too, you screen. see pictures of it dressed up for different things. Yeah, they take off the Piedmont section, or they put it back, or like it's just it's all always changing. It's all in yeah. flux. And I looked it up, like, I had never really paid attention to, like, how all that's set up, but I I looked it up. Um, it's a very elaborate and specifically built set. Like, how, like, they repurpose it. They still actively shoot uh, shows, or you, they use it as scenery, yeah. I suppose. Uh, but, like, their Wisteria Lane for um, Desperate Housewives, like, there's a whole, like, neighborhood section that looks I, like I a neighborhood. I did read about that, yeah. Yeah. Which, I mean, is kind of crazy that they're real houses that were built for just sets. Like a real neighborhood. It's a real neighborhood. It's yeah. kind of creepy, but also kind of, like, interesting. Mm-hmm. So, but, yeah, this was a interesting choice and interesting, I mean, like, this, the scenery itself was just so It was surreal. Neat. Yeah, it was, it was surreal. It was, it was yeah. just cool. And, and I think, you know, we all like movies and tv and and have things and so just and to feel nobody like lies nobody lie you're slightly fascinated by like hollywood and like how oh, totally, things yeah. work absolutely yeah did you see that jason statham was photographed there Mm-mm. jason statham was photographed there and i think james marsden had a car in it oh really yeah it was oh, like wow. a slant nose that oh, was wow. like near the 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 courthouse oh i had no idea or the clock tower Sorry. yeah i was actually like slightly disappointed that like i didn't actually see any uh notable people yeah as far as a movie people go jeff saw jerry oh really yeah i assumed that he was there friend of the show jeff jablanski yeah not jerry seinfeld it, not yet um it was it was very cool also getting there was very cool so you went you had media access and so you went ahead of me mm-hmm. and you gave me your media parking pass yeah and it was such a weird so we were talking about the logistics of this event in particular and how it's you know all Luftigolts are unique one-off location events and so the logistics of basically holding this massive event at a theme park uh is very difficult and people who had general admission apparently had to wait like up to two hours in yeah. the line to get on a shuttle to be taken to the back lot and you know unavoidable probably because you know how do you know that this is going to happen until you actually run the event and but with your media pass they ushered me to the other side of the uh property or the studio lot and which by the way the place is huge i actually had to take a freeway to get to the other side oh yeah me too me yeah too. that's insane and so we went to, it was like gate four or something, and I think they misdirected me because I ended up parking like at a soundstage. Yeah, you were parked right, like you were parked like 100 feet from the clock yeah. tower. Yeah, and I think your your pass was meant for another shuttle, mm-hmm. like but a closer one. And yeah, so I ended up parking, like I accidentally drove, I, I didn't tell you, but I accidentally drove onto like one of the set streets. Uh, and one of the people like waved me down. I was like, "Hey, you can't be here." No way. Yeah. And so I had to turn around, and he was like, "Yeah, just park like wh- whatever, just park right there." And so I parked, and there was like no one else parked there. It was like it had like uh, it had event parking signs up, but the adjacent ones were for like talent and like producers yeah. and whatnot. So it was kind of neat. So I walked like straight in from the back end of the event. Um, I didn't even like my ticket didn't even get scanned. I'm waiting for you to. There you go. That was a very unsatisfying pop. <laughs> the first one, yeah. Yeah. So, like, basically, <laughs> through, like, prop bushes, I emerged into the event. <laughs> uh, and 
I was just like, for the first like hour at least, I almost didn't even pay attention to the cars because I was just like looking around at the setting. Was that before you found me? Because you got there at like 11 or something. I got there at 11, yeah. And I got there at 7. Yeah. I got there early for with media, um, which I'll go into. But yeah, um, yeah go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I got there at 11. Oh, and on the way to walking there, I was almost certain that someone was going to say, hey, you can't be here because I didn't, everyone who was where I was walking had like, uh, like passes or whatever, identification for being in the stage area. And I was walking through active movie sets. Like, oh my God. Which I don't, I can't confirm. I, it and they're looked like, like, hey, you, hey, Ken Jong, <laughs> oh, get over here. God. It would, that sounds much more racist than it actually is because... No, no it's not what you think. It's because... I look like Ken Jong. Yeah. All right. Okay. No, you That's... you joked about getting mistaken for him. I don't think I did. This yeah. is really <laughs> offensive. And <laughs> so uh, I walked through what may or may not have been like a set for a Mad Max movie or Mad Max-like movie because there were a bunch of like clapped out current day cars like a modern Range Rover but like dusted and with like bolt on metal and whatnot to make it look like it it's from a dystopian future Ooh. and uh, like various other just kind of like it's just it's really weird because you're just walking through like different sceneries and sets uh and it just changes like it just changes with each sound stage that you walk past but anyways and then I emerged into the event uh I you were still shooting. I was wandering around. I had to take like a call too randomly. Uh, yeah. So I like the, for the first hour, I just I barely saw like the cars. I just mm-hmm. saw like the stages. Also, I was trying to get like t- into a quiet spot, which there was none, yeah. uh, which, obviously. But after that, like yeah, then the cars, everything, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So there has not been yet a disappointing Luftgekult. No, I would say no. Yeah, it's just, it was big. I really went into it thinking this would be smaller. I yeah. heard rumors there's gonna be less cars entered, and I figured, I this. I mean, the set was so much. The location was so much bigger than I expected. I yeah. really thought it was gonna be smaller. I thought so uh, too. Thought it was gonna be scaled down, kind of like especially like how the London one. Yeah, seemed really scaled down. And that's the thing is that like I don't know that the show would have been worse if it were smaller. So I mean, everything was interesting. Uh, but by the time like two o'clock rolled around, I thought we'd seen everything, and I learned like there was a whole like another part of the show that yeah I missed, and I would have been satisfied just seeing what I had already seen, and yeah, so we wandered over to uh, it was called Mexico, just Mexico. It was called Mexican Street. Mexican there, Street. Yeah. Yeah. So and it looked like San Antonio, basically. Yeah, well, there's part. Of, the I Alamo. think there's different parts of it. There's like yeah. six points and stuff, and then there's, yeah, and there's like they have like a replica Alamo and yeah stuff. Uh, and so it was a very extensive show, and yeah, I thought it was gonna be smaller too, just because it was limited tickets. So well, they did that. I think last year was limited, but they announced it this year, and they were like, "Yeah, you better get them." Because I think last year, I don't think they expected it to sell out, and they did. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that because I almost didn't get in. You almost didn't get in. Yeah. Um. So. Okay. So what stood out for you? Um, I took some notes. Oh no. This um, is. I don't know. What do you What do you think? Uh. So I'll say that I was very distracted by the environment. I mean, the cars were very amazing, of course. Uh, and I would say, so for me, it wasn't the... So there are a lot of very special cars there, a lot of museum pieces, basically. And mm-hmm. I've we've seen a few of them before, and there were... I wish I'd know. I wish I knew more about the race cars because they seem very fascinating. I just have no context yeah. as far as like what they were. But I enjoyed seeing uh, local portrait collectors. Uh, Michael Brandon's uh, 1976 Turbo Carrera that he had sold apparently. We didn't know that. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Michael Brandon. Michael, Michael Forge. Forge. Michael Forge. Yeah. 
I, I always think about his business, which is called M. Brandon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he had, uh, down here, we had seen it at a couple of uh, meetups here, but it's a 1976 Turbo Carrera in, in ice blue on polar, blue. polar. Polar ice blue. Polar ice blue. And it, it's like a bluish white almost. Yeah. Uh, and this car was purported it's like a the dress situation where you take yeah. a picture of it and it looks like it's white and yeah the, and the color balance of everything else is off yeah yeah it's, it's, it's a really cool. unique it's got color. a blue interior blue interior and uh it's said to be one of the the first one of the first turbos in the u.s in 1976 it and it was at the new york auto show allegedly the reveal car yeah it, yeah and so and the car has provenance i don't know i guess it's harder to prove which car that might have been. But it's harder to prove because there's no photos from the event. Yeah. Like, no one has, like, things. So it's just kind of weird. And they probably didn't, like, record the VIN or anything for the car that right. was there. But it's a beautiful car. And yeah. it has, like, the turbo graphic on the side that, like, hugs the arch. Yes. Which is so cool. Yeah, the, like, the halftone yeah. lines. So it was just cool to see that that car didn't up there. And then we... it, yeah, it was given uh, extremely special... Oh, yeah placement he yeah was like it was in, in the hangar with or not hangar in the south stage with uh yeah everything yeah so that was very cool there was a 964 cup there which i was very surprised to see and i didn't even realize that's what it was uh until like i'd rounded back again but that's which one was that uh there was a white one was it, it in the same sound stage no 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 it was one of the general uh the general cards just kind of around but that's it was like one of four that was turned uh, into a road car basically oh wow yeah and i mean it looks uh, that's one of those i mean it's a 911 mm-hmm. and and so it looked very normal except that it said cup on the back okay but uh very rare and cool i love the 914 display like the collection of I'm such a big fan of 914s. I don't have like a huge amount of knowledge about them, but I'd like to. And they I did see a 914 6 uh M four seventy one, which was the GT body oh. on a normal car. And it's kinda like seeing an M four nine one nine eleven. Totally. Where it there's just something so cool about it, even though it's basically just an appearance package. Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. And like with the M four nine one, like they're worth almost as much as like a nine thirty, which is yeah. crazy. There was more like the Luth Cars site, according to the site that had information about the cars. Which mm-hmm. even if you weren't at the event, or especially if you weren't at the event, you should check out LuthCars dot com yeah. because there's it's an easy search, or you could just you could just basically display just, all yeah, and look at and look at the all the cars thing, and, yeah. and and see. And I guess they probably got probably. 75 percent of the cars that were there on the website yeah and, i think so um but according to that there was more 914.6s than two liters oh really yeah oh that's interesting yeah wow that's really cool i didn't know that yeah uh, uh so that's certainly uh, a rare occurrence i would think uh they also had a, a gt there which i'd never i probably maybe i saw one at loof before but i didn't pay attention but they did have like a, a 19 uh, or sorry a 914 6 gt it was a Monte Carlo race car. Oh, cool. It was really cool. Uh, I also, so the, uh, I'd never seen a 993 GT2. That was cool. Have and you rare. I don't think so. Okay. Was there one at Luft uh, I don't the know. last two years? I don't know. I feel like I hadn't seen one before because I was really surprised to see it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the coffee train. Yeah. Thing. Oh, I yeah. I didn't know that existed. What's so funny because, so it was, imagine like one of these Porsche Junior tractors. Yeah. With like, an, it looks like an aero kit. Yeah. Made of metal. It, and it, like, it was an orange, it was like a fairing, like yeah. a sport bike fairing on a Porsche tractor. And I really didn't know. I was like, is this something that happened in period or is this something where, yeah, retro. where it was retrofitted? Because yeah. cause there was. You know, after the during the tractor races at, at Rensport Reunion last year, yeah, it was such a big hit, and some of the teams, like, like I think um, Kevin Jeanette and like Gunnar Racing, like they they had not aero kits on their tractors, but they had like modern like pink pig liveries and yeah. stuff on their tractor, just as like you know, just kind of a joke. And yeah. so I was like, "What is this? What is this?" But it was uh, it was a genuine thing from Brazil. That's so cool. I mean, it looked like a retro future tractor from the past. 
and you just have to look it up and see it. It just, it's, it looks like it has arrow. It's just basically. Oh, it totally does. So I have this, the stuff. It's the 1954 P three twelve coffee train. Yep. Built in small numbers around 200 for Brazil to till the soil for coffee crops. The bodywork keeps the tractor from damaging the coffee plants. Oh, whoa. Okay. Yeah. So it just slips in between the, what I'm assuming is corn stalks. Coffee? Yeah, but I'm assuming it looks like <laughs> corn. Coffee plants? Coffee plants look like, um, they just look like ferns, basically, with berries. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that was really cool. The other thing is, so part of the fascination with Lufthansa uh, Cult is that uh, it's not only just the special cars, but the normal cars. Yeah. Because, you know, every time I go during the year, in, during the year in between, there are just like cars that you see either on Instagram or wherever. And it just gets your mind churning about like, oh, that's neat. That's neat. And then seeing them in person. Like the normal cars. Like I saw so many variations of yellow. Mm-hmm. And I was looking for a yellow car for a long time and unfulfilled that uh, whole desire. But still, like, you saw every variation of anything that you were interested in seeing, like forum posts or whatever. And it was there. There was some variation of. And we go to plenty of Porsche events as it is, but there's always something that you see that you didn't see in the past where there is just like an option or like a modification or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So that's always fun uh, doing that. It just fulfills like a very nerdy uh, part of the interest, I suppose. Um, so what were your thoughts on the 356 Emery Special? Um. I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool. I thought the rear looked really cool. Yeah. So this is a car that is Rod Emery's, and he's like the master of 356, yeah. you know, creating outlaws and stuff. Yeah. And this is the extreme, like, it's almost like if the 356 had a 935. Yeah. Where yeah. it's like this crazy arrow version, yep. wide body 356. Um, I think it's like really well executed. I think the rear is cool. The front's maybe not exactly to my liking, but yeah. it's not doesn't totally matter but it's cool i saw it and, at um you know it was at red sport not fully complete yeah like i think the back wasn't there i think like half the body panels were on like yeah. it's been a big project with momo and momo's been really getting yeah. it out there for promotion even during the build yeah so to see it basically finished i think yeah um it's pretty cool and it's a uh, it looked very cool i think it's a twin turbo it's it's insane yeah it's very cool it's so aggressive looking and the thing is, like, I, because, and I think you're the same way, I don't have, like, a lot of knowledge or high interest in 356s, although I like them. They're, like, they're, it's neat, uh, or they're neat, but I don't have a lot of knowledge, and so I'm not particularly bothered by, like, this highly modified, like, thing, uh, and it's just so well done. But I'm, I kind of feel the same way, though, about... I was about to say, maybe I don't feel that way about 911s, but I kind of do. Like, I actually kind of like RWBs. Oh, yeah, I love yeah, them. Yeah, like, they're so well done, and it is a work of art. Yeah. Uh, and, but it gets people so mad. Like, the purists, the pedants, yeah. are just not interested. And I, I wonder if 356 people look at that and melt or turn into skeletons. I Here's my thing on the 356, and this is, I just articulated yeah. Just now, in this moment. Yes. Um, about about this Emory 356, what doesn't sit well with me yeah. is, and it's not a purity sense, but it's like what appeals to me about the 356 mm-hmm. uh, compared to the 911 is that it's like these beautiful unbroken surfaces. Sure. Like there's no, They've... there's so few cut lines and so few panels yeah. and there's no like exposed rivets or bolts or anything. Yeah. Um, except like in the lighting and everything. And this has like a lot more exposed yeah. rivets and bolts. Yeah. Uh holding up like and fasteners on this bodywork. Yeah. And that kind of doesn't like that's kind of like uh I kind of just want a nine eleven. If you're gonna have that, like that to yeah. me, like a nine thirty five and all the fasteners, like that's the coolest thing. Sure. But the three fifty six I love and the Emory three fifty sixes especially, it's like 
the cleanest car, just this glassy smooth surface. Oh yeah, with yeah. So few cut lines and yeah, and it's just and gorgeous. Three fifty sixes in general, just they photograph yeah very well. All of my best pictures from the event were yeah. 356s, mostly because of how maybe how they were positioned, where the light yeah. was, but well, they just, always looked even good. Me, I wasn't intentionally trying to take uh, like good photos, but I would always be drawn to like how light was hitting like yeah. a particular 356. And there's just something about it. Like it just it really pops out from the light uh, versus the other cars. Yeah. But yeah, like there's just something about that. So I just wrote down some of my favorites and some observations yes. that uh, the Irish Green 993 Ooh, we both saw. And yeah. I think I saw it at Luft last year, yeah. which is another point I might have. But is um, that? I guess that would have to be, is that paint to sample? I, I guess so. I guess it would be, I, yeah, because I, you never see them. Well, because every 993 color was like metallic unless yeah. it was white or red. Yeah, that's true. Um the pastel yellow 993s was <sighs> yeah, outstanding. I mean, it was, just, it was so cool. That like color, it's, it's is somehow so good. like it's understated and yet like shocking. Yeah, it uh, really is. And that was just a plain C2. Maybe it was, it was a C2s. It was a C2s. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty much like the perfect 993. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, there was that signal yellow SC, yeah. which was probably my favorite, just because it was so uh, that color unusual is so like intense like yeah. it's such an intense yellow it's a very orangey yellow yeah but not orange it's not yeah and but it looked so good it looked so good it was just so clean and it yep. sat there that's what that's what was so cool also like um i kind of had some bigger dumb thoughts about yeah how i feel about these museum cars and the race yeah. cars and the like perfect cars around these palettes and stuff and yeah. i love that the just like good examples of like weird and normal cars like yeah. extremely normal cars can have basically the same billing like that yeah that yellow sc was in the same row with like oh the, like rs's the, the, the rs's and, and, and ruby stone rs's too. yeah uh yeah no i and th that's what i think the show does capture that interest pretty well where you have just the most normal cars cars in various states of like care against like museum pieces and yeah like they're all kind of revered uh in the same way in a sense like that like it's all part of like this interest and they all belong there in this show for viewing and that's what's kind of interesting and the, you know i was saying before that the show cars were really interesting or the museum pieces were very interesting but i was kind of less interested in seeing those than uh seeing even the normal cars or half normal cars uh or sorry a slightly more rare uh, in between rare cars i guess than the uber rare cars but and maybe that's just because we've seen a lot of them before or yeah. equivalents too. I, just, yeah, I, just, I mean yeah we you've been to three yeah Colts and i've been to was it ren sport and yeah. i i've seen a lot of the cars a lot of museum cars yeah. a lot of the and you know even the the um, Peterson show, yeah. Peterson event, yeah. or the the uh, Porsche exhibition, yeah. You know the some of those were there. Yep. Yeah. So and speaking of rare cars, that I think we share an opinion and a, a mutual opinion on this, but the nine five nine SC. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm sure we've talked about this. Maybe. It, Maybe we talked it? about it. What is it? Not good. <laughs> So it's it's a nine five nine worked over by Canepa yeah. to be modernized. It's modernized. It is taking what arguably is one of the most perfect of that period cars and saying, I know, I'll make it better. I'll make it like a car that's fit for today. Yeah. And so why not just buy a car of today? And have the same performance, right. if not better. For... Yeah, you would get better performance from yeah. like a, a brand new 911 Turbo. Yeah, like there's just, I, I the effort is impressive and the work is stunning, but the concept, the idea of the car, I it, the it's stunning except for the overscale wheels, which I really don't but like. We, but neither of us noticed that they were overscale. No, because they were like. They were like powder coated, like a dark gray, much yeah. like a today car would be. Right. Uh, and 
So the exercise itself just takes a car that didn't need to be modernized. No one right. asked for it to be modernized, although they've they sold, they pre-sold like um, last year. Last it year, was, like yeah, four of shown, them. It was yeah. shown at Luft uh, Five. Yeah, um, I feel I I don't know. This is a really dumb hang up. Yeah, but they claimed on the launch yeah. that they wanted it to be like the I'm using quotations here, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like the singer of nine five nines. So it's like. We take the nine five nine. We strip down every bolt. Yeah. We remake it. Yeah. But they they're not making anything new. They're just making they're just making an improvement. Which I guess you could say about a singer. But I feel like a singer has Singer's there's there's a though. vision. There's an there execution is. of vision. And 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 I would yeah. like it, it's like if if they could say this bumper, you know this 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 integration. If they could minimize some like panel gaps or something yeah. you know if they like streamline something where it's like this is all one piece now yeah and it's all carbon fiber and we couldn't do this in 86 and now we yeah. can do it like that would be really cool and the singer is kind of like it's a hot rod and it is i don't know there's some, something very different about that concept versus this one where i think maybe part of it was that you know a 964 was not necessarily like meant to be this pedestal like it was not meant to be like the perfect car necessarily and so changing that up is no loss versus the 959 which is not to say that it shouldn't be used and it should be stuffed in a museum or anything but like that is the perfect representation of what was the best at that time and i would think that you would if you bought that car you want to drive with that experience Mm -hmm. because if you wanted something more and more modern then just buy a gt3 or something like right. there's just no point uh there just didn't seem to be a point to that exercise and it if anything at all it just takes out like and i'm not like a super huge like porsche originalist i suppose but like those cars though i mean like modifying them i mean why just, also uh, I, for the last like six years i kind of thought there was like a thousand nine five nine yeah there's only 300 there are only 300 of them and here's someone who's stripping the paint like redoing the interior basically just saying like like eddie bowerizing it <laughs> like it's just like i don't mm, i yeah. don't know i think that the beige trim around the wheel arches was a bad choice yeah yeah i but, agree um okay so what else do i got oh i wanted to tell you um the two race cars. Yes. You said you want to know more. I know I, I told do. you about the 936. The 936, they claimed on the storyline yes. this was the California debut, but it was not because I oh, took right. pictures of this car in 2015 yeah. at Rensport. It but was a different one. No, it's okay. No, it's not. So the so that is the successor to the 917. Yeah. Okay. It's the, it's the middle child between the 917 yeah. and the 956. Okay. And so it ran with the 956 engine in 81. Like yeah. they pulled it out of the museum to run yeah. at Le Mans and it won. Yeah. Um which is very cool. And yeah. uh it was cool to see it. It's Yeah. It is the middle the middle one that gets overlooked. And then so the 917 PA was in the sound stage. It's it was a Can-Am open top 917. Yeah. It was white. Yeah. Uh it looks just like it looks not like a a, a normal 917 can am car it looks yeah. almost like a 917k if you took the roof off yeah um and i found out in my research that that car raced at uh texas world speedway oh, in 1969 wow. that's so 19, cool 1969 uh can am season went to texas world speedway yeah. which is in college station it's which like a, is now not a, now it's not there yeah or it's not in, in its entirety but yeah. it was a uh oval with a, a infield road course yeah i've driven on it and uh, so it's pretty cool that that exact car drove on that track and it finished yeah. fourth in the race. Um, that is very cool. Very cool. Bruce McLaren won the race. I did not. I didn't know that K and M went to Texas World Speedway. So I think yeah. that's pretty cool. That is cool. Um, I didn't know that they would even. I thought that was purely for uh, NASCAR or NASCAR like events only. No, they used to race IndyCar there too. Okay. Yeah. It's, wow. There's an infield road course. Okay. And they used it. Oh, cool. Um, there it, now. That is being slowly turned into a neighborhood development. Yeah. Well, what held them off for for so many years was like they didn't know how toxic the ground was yeah. from like leakage and stuff. And it's so, <laughs> which is so weird because College Station is very, uh, we'll say remote. It is. 
So it's like, I don't understand. I I obviously know nothing about development and real estate because it's like, oh, we've got all this we could build, but someone owns that. So we're going to buy this and we're going to build right here. It's probably like 80 miles outside of Houston or something. And let's be honest, like Houston sprawl, that's going to intersect. And that's just going to be a suburb of Houston one day. Oh, yeah. Um, So, oh, so Jerry's 934. Yeah. I'm... I thought it was cool. Yeah. I, I thought if you read the storylines, I thought it was cool that they basically said 934s, which were like a 930 turbo for racing. Yeah. A lot of them were converted to 935s. Yeah. So a lot of them were kind of lost. Oh, interesting. So um, 934s are unusual. So here's the thing about that 934 that is how it relates to me. Yes. Um, I was in Monterey in August. Yeah. And I toured Canepa. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I remember, and I didn't take a picture or anything because I felt like it was a huge violation of privacy. But they had like a huge, they had this wall of like a, of people's keys, yeah, of cars they're working on, oh, cars right. they're rebuilding, yeah. And, and one of them was like orange nine thirty four Jerry Seinfeld. <gasps> what? Like this car That's was cool. just yeah, this car was just like stripped and renovated yeah. and overhauled at Canepa in the past year. Also, I feel like that's like. The thing that Jerry Seinfeld would hate the most Absolutely. is his, his name on a sticker <laughs> attached to a key on a wall. Oh, I know. It's like it was crazy that they got the public in this area where you yeah. could see it. And that's why I didn't take a picture because I was like, this is a huge privacy violation. Yeah. But um, I thought it was cool. So that car was in the show. That's very cool. Um, oh, I think the 356, the, that barn find. I say oh, barn find. Oh, yeah. It was like a container. It was yeah. in a container since 1979. That's crazy. And they like rolled it out like this guy... I saw his Instagram. He basically, his family's been trying to buy it since 79 yeah. or since the 80s. And he, uh, they finally, he so finally wait, got it. Like it was just like someone was shipped it somewhere and they just left it in there. I don't know the story. Okay. I think it just sat that was, in someone's property. You took or a something. very nice photo of that too. Oh, thank by you the so way. much. It was very nice. Thank you. It, that car, I think everyone got good pictures. Not everyone got good pictures of it, but some people did. Yeah. And it was, it was so cool. The grit, I mean, it was just like, caked on yeah. dust and grit yeah. and it, it looked really cool yeah. it was it was i think that stole the show for a yeah. lot of people um and then le- learning the story learning a little more after yeah. afterwards someone tagged the owner on the the photo yeah. that i posted and um he commented so I, yeah so i so i you know looked at his profile saw the backstory so it's it's a cool yeah. cool car um i think that's about all my notes yeah. i just again i kind of i I'm like you, like the the normal cars, the weird versions of normal cars, yeah. or the like slightly modified normal cars, or the things that are or just uh, more approachable. Seeing yeah. those in a nice or, gathering is does it more for me than the museum cars. And yeah, the cars. and that and just like even just seeing the cars that you see on social media, where you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, and then seeing it in person and seeing like the actual detail or lack of, uh, like in person is interesting because yeah. I don't know. It's just like it's on it's on topic or of mind. And then next year, I'm sure we'll this coming year we'll see cars, and then we'll see them there, and it will be interesting. And you're saying that you are interested in driving up to Luke. Yeah, I I am. I I either think you know I, I repeated this whenever I run into people, and that's another aspect of the event is like we saw so many people, mm. so many friends, so many people we've met. And, yeah, so um, many, and it's just. You know, it, that's why I was there for like seven hours. I yeah. was shooting and I was talking to people. Yeah. And um, it was like a cameo a sitcom with like, it's like a reunion show. It was like, too many cooks. Yeah. <laughs> it was um, too many cooks. I, wa- I was, so it was just a bunch of friends, great people. Yeah. Um, and I would say like, you know, th- I wasn't going to come to this. Yeah. And then I saw the venue and I was like, I have to come. Yeah. So uh, I, next year, I don't know what they'll do, but. I don't want to fly out again. I either want to not go or yeah. I want to drive out. I, I would love to, like, I really want to enter my car. And yeah. I really, even if it means like not shooting the event, just, yeah, just driving in, just having my car there. Because I think I, not like I think it's special, but I think it would, I think it would stand out a little with my dumb stripes. No. And maybe, maybe some people would know it and uh, it would be cool. And I, I feel like they've had the last, I feel, I feel like they've had the same cars. Like They have. So many times, so, you know, we, we talked about, you know, we like to speculate how we would do things differently and how I would do things differently <laughs> is I would want. Yeah, we like to interject about like how we would do things worse. So I think for next year, it would be cool if they had maybe a limit on how many times you could enter or if, if you were in the 2019 show, 
with your car that your don't apply for 2020 because yeah. we want different cars. Because we've seen the same cars a bunch of times. S- display them differently. Like even if it if if it were a venue that allowed for like that first um or not the first sorry the which one was it four where they had San Pedro San Pedro where they had the huge lot full of um, non-participant cars basically yeah uh that was kind of interesting like walking through that it was over also super overwhelming because there were so many cars there yeah but because I mean that really was just obvious like sp- uncurated spillover parking. Yeah. Like, I've never seen that before. Yeah. And I've been to... This is the fourth one I've been to. And I've never... That's the only one where I've seen, like, here's spillover parking. Yeah. But, I mean, it was... It was cool. But, um, yeah, yeah. there was definitely... And that was the one where there was, like, a premium divide. That's the other thing is that going... When you look at loofedcars.com, like, there are a bunch on there where their, like, their profile photos are from past looped events. Yeah. So... Yeah. It's just one of those things where... And, you know, maybe there aren't enough people who can participate or maybe not. I mean, no, like, I think they turned away cars and they turned yeah. away a lot of people. And that's why I'm saying like, there should be yeah. um, just newer, fresher things. Cause I think it'd be better for the fans yeah. and better for the participants. Yeah. Cause they, I mean, they're actively doing that with the location. So yeah, it seems but, like the actual content of the show. Yeah. They could also, I'm already thinking about, I'll use my connections when I apply. <laughs> oh my <laughs> Lord. Uh, no, that would be cool though. And so would you would you fly out and meet me? I would, yeah, I'd fly out. I would not drive with you. I understand. It is a very long drive. I know. And but still, like we were talking about the people who were driving in from all over, uh, and that's kind of cool too. I have I do not have the fortitude to drive. Like, I would do it that far. I would do it. You but already, I mean, yeah, you've already done California. I mean, in the past, I was like, oh, I don't know if I would do it for just Luft, but I, yeah. I feel like I want my car in that yeah. once. No, it'd be a lot of fun. Definitely. And, you know, all the more encouragement if, like, the the next venue is uh, as creative, too. Because they they have been increasing the creativity. They have. They have. So I don't doubt the next one, which we've been trying to guess what it might be. And I don't know if any of our suggestions or any of our guesses would be spot on. But I think they should somehow either close off part of the LA freeway somehow like they do for movie shoots like some like overpass or something well not an overpass no that'd be kind of lame mm-hmm. the LA river maybe that would be cool but yeah. I think it'd be like real liability issues probably like yeah if it rained. yeah maybe I guess <laughs> yeah so okay I mean, maybe like half of like a like an airport runway or something yeah yeah that could be cool I don't know if they, you can do that like or not, like at a small airport yeah, yeah, but but then you're you're out in the sun yeah. and there's not like shadows and stuff except in the hangars and you're yeah. only gonna get maybe one or two hangars out of ten. Palm Springs, but that might be too far. It's pretty far. Yeah, yeah. Mm, it has to be or oh, it, like an automotive factory. That like, would be cool. Some sort of plant, and yeah, you just sprinkle the cars throughout the plant through the machinery and whatnot. Mm-hmm. That would be kind of that would be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. So, um, I wanted to talk a little bit just about photographing the event because I yeah. kind of had the observation in the last couple of days that yes. it's, um, after I've said, oh, I won't go to the next one. And I'm like, it, I feel like every car photographer ends up there and, uh, and yeah. it's become like the Super Bowl of car photography where it's like everyone has their, you know, these same parameters, these yeah. same limitations. I didn't, I didn't really talk too much about the limitations, but, um, for shooting, it was, it was not exactly to my liking because it was really overcast yeah. until like 1030, which yeah. is when there was a billion people there. Yeah. So uh, I got there at seven. It was pretty gray. Um, and it was it was definitely nice to be able to shoot without crowds. I don't know if you saw any of my pictures, but there I did. It, there the, was the morning shots. Super empty. Yeah. Like the morning just, shots looked very and the light, too, was very interesting. Yeah, it was interesting. I'm not. Uh, it's just. It's just not my ideal thing. Yeah, there was yeah. no shadows and everything. Yeah, but it, or everything was kind of cast in shadow. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, it is like an interesting like photographic challenge, and and I a lot of shooters that I like were there and did yeah. some cool things, and everyone had maybe a little different spin. I, they I did, yeah. I was very conscious of trying to shoot. Uh, the space yeah. and show the environment because you could get in this trap of just doing detail. Yeah, Cause that's what it, it 
is is the environment and the yeah. context. And it, it's a show where people are at, and you can't avoid that. Right. So if you don't embrace that, then you end up uh, just shooting cars in a very weird way. Like, just just the object itself. And I feel like that's kind of a waste. Well, I, t- I try to do that, but anyway. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. uh, but I don't know. I'm There's definitely people that are better cap better definitely shooters that are better at capturing like moments yeah. with the people and the surroundings and stuff and i'm just i'm never really looking at that i'm yeah. the worst people watcher I can't I wait don't give a shit until you're that guy who was just like yelling from the background like hey guys you i hope i would never hey you guys, think i was can you, you're saying I would, i'm gonna <laughs> you're saying i'm gonna degress to that yeah like, i'm gonna go from being a professional uh, to being in my shot like oh guys can you he was doing that for five minutes. But why are you comparing that to me? I'm just, I'm kidding. I'm just saying that. That's, no, I mean that's a... your, that's inevitably where you're gonna end up. You're okay. just gonna, you're. Yeah, I could see it. Yeah, I'm sorry. So that's just it. It was, it was, uh, it was good. Yeah. No, it was good. The photos you took, uh, which are on Road and Track and on your Instagram. Yeah. Always an interesting take. Oh, like thanks. honestly, just. That is just it. Like it's how you embrace the environment and provide context without it just turning into, like, uh, I mean, it's a car show with people. Mm-hmm. So, like, the fact that you aren't shooting through like legs or they're just like people. I mean, you manage the people well in that context too. And we were playing around with that. I mean. I did again. I did not no, you did take great. any you did. intentional shots, but that uh, the what is the app it's, called? It's it? an app called Spectra, Spectra for iOS, yeah. and it, it takes or Spectra. basically uses yeah Spectra. It uses um, algorithm to make yeah it's long like, exposures into it. Basically, you, it it takes like a yeah series of images that combines and makes into a long exposure, and it blurs out people. Yeah, like it. It goes to them. It's just like they're motion blurred, so that you can s- you can see the scenery still, and the people are still there, but they kind of ghosted out a little bit. And the bit. cool thing, so the funny thing is, like I brought, I, I prepared to do that yeah. with my big camera, yeah. and it was so much easier with the app. Yeah, the app, yeah, the app does make because it you like, don't have very to easy. actually have a tripod. So I could stand there on like the top of the stairs, holding yeah. my phone up over my head, yeah. and just keeping it somewhat stable. And it would do this like perfect yeah, it, ghosted image where everything is like long exposure. Like, Whereas with my tripod and DSLR, I had to, you know, have it on the ground and, and yeah, it has like faux image stabilization where yeah, yeah it just it, you just stay still for up to nine seconds and it creates like a really interesting image and you have you totally. still have camera control too. It, yeah, it came out great. Yeah, it came out really cool. Uh, but no, I think you did like it was a really it it. Ended up being like a very interesting photo story. Oh, thank you. Because thank again, you. I you just have to embrace. It's not just you know when people just go and they just they just focus so hard on shooting like the car that they I think they miss like the environment and yeah. and just embracing the fact that it is a car show. Mm-hmm. It is not like um, a studio where it's only the car. Right. So I mean, well, I also I sometimes wonder if I avoid doing like this the the cliche car angles so much <laughs> that I don't actually show cars because that's the other thing that that's the other photographic point I wanted to make was yeah I for me it's like the events you know I, I was asked like what's the best what is the what is the best Luca cult and I'm yeah. thinking to myself like I rank them on the images I got I yeah. rank them on the photo the photography like yeah. when I'm shooting the cars it's it's like the car, like the specifics of that car are usually like my fifth priority. It's yeah. about like the light and the scene and the setting. And yeah. it's like, I know that I can get a, like if I'm, I'm hunting for the best picture yeah. and whatever car is in it is tangential to that. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's always how I, I look at it. So I don't always get like, Oh, I don't get the important cars. Like yeah. I didn't, I didn't shoot anything. I was happy with, with the GT two yeah. nine nine three, but, um, but, you know, I'll get, some random Carrera all yeah. day long. Yeah, yeah. Or 356s, which all were were parked better, I guess. <laughs> they all of, were. All of the 356s were parked better. And they were parked like better in lighting like and alcoves and like alleyways, and it was interesting. The light just hits them very interesting. They do, yeah. Interestingly. Um, no, it was, it was like, it was well thought out. Are you still on your first drink? Yeah. 
Well, you drank the rest of the liter of scotch that we have. That's not true. There's a little bit here. Oh, my God. Well, you look a little dry there. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was about to finish. Yeah. Please do. Uh, anyways, shall we move on to the final segment? Yeah. Did we have any other notes? I no, we'll skip don't them. think so. Oh, yeah, we had, like, just come over. That's fine. Yeah. Like, um, our, like, no, the, no, no, we'll skip just catch up on, like, everybody else's social media who went to, like, the event, and you'll round out the picture of what it was like, because there were a lot of people there. There were. Yeah. So, and even though, like, I've hammered this joke to death already, but I was severely disappointed that uh, my childhood dream of having <laughs> a director yell from across the set, you there. Like in a 1920s voice, boy with the propeller hat, you're my next star. <laughs> so that didn't happen, alas. So I will not be showing up on your screens, America. I was trying. I was also I had one more thing. I was thinking when I was talking about the racing cars yes. and how, like, I don't even know if there's any race car, any air cooled Porsche race car that would really blow my mind if I saw it at Lufthansa. Oh, really? I don't know if that's necessarily something I need to pursue. I think. Any, you know, we talked to Brad. I think any 935 at yeah. Radwood would be amazing. Yeah. I wish Radwood had more racing cars. In and context, I know yeah, that, for sure. I know that Brad does too. And yeah. It's, it's, this is not like, yeah. you know, it's not like I'm making a, a new point. But there was no, there's there's not any race car I can think of except maybe like a, maybe like a GT2 race car from like 95 that competed at Le Mans sure. and yeah. it's like still dirty with grime. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But um, I think the opportunities are still there for that to happen. I think so. Yeah. So, and yeah, in context with the, that show in particular or those events in particular, like that'd be really cool. Like as opposed to, because there's so many historic cars at Luftgold and, uh, I keep saying it like two different ways. Luftekult and Luftgekult. Luftekult. Uh, it. Yeah. So it, not that it doesn't make it, uh, that it makes it less special, but it's less of a spectacle, I suppose. Yeah. And, whereas at Radwood, I think like it juxt- juxtaposed with very normal cars, very normal, good cars. Like that would be kind of interesting. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I still would not know what any of them are. I know. But I would still take a picture and move on. So, so new for 92. New for 92. I didn't even do a new for 96. Oh, no. So new for 92. New for 92. 92 was a good year. Yeah. Like, uh, okay. So are we going to FMK this or are we going to go just roll through it? Um... Let's cut out this pause and let's FMK it. Except let's give each other like good choices. Okay, so I'm choosing for you and you're choosing for me. Yes. All right. Then. Um, fine. Okay. So I'm just doing a scan and I'm going to go ahead and choose for you. So uh, I'm going to choose for you first. Fine. Okay. Choose for me. Now. Ferrari 456. I... Porsche 968. Oh. Jeep Grand Cherokee. Okay. And what What are they for me? Oh, I'm picking what they are. I thought you chose. Oh, really? Okay. We've, We've done this 45 different review ways. Review the rules for this. Fine. I will marry the 456 because that is an all-around Ferrari. Yes. And one of my favorites. Uh, I will, of course, uh, fuke the 968 because I probably only ever want to drive one once as far as my interest goes and obviously, um, kill the Jeep Grand Cherokee, even though I think that's a good generation. I do too. That's yeah. Good. But, um, I have no interest in one. I should have made it more difficult. Yeah. So for you, yes, uh, Auto Zam AZ1, which stands for Automatic Zamboni, <laughs> uh, a Bentley Brooklands Coupe. What does the 1992 Brooklands look like? It looks like... Okay, fine. 
I'm sure it looks like that. It basically looks the same. We're yeah. looking at a modern one, and it, it basically probably looks the same. Uh, and, ooh, I'm going to go with the third car being the Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor. Oh, my which goodness. Which was new for 92. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, look at that. This is actually very challenging. Look at that panther. Good panther. I guess I would. I guess I would daily, the Brooklyns. Good choice. And I would, fuke the Autozam. Yeah. And I would kill the Crown Vic, but I don't hate it. But I mean, it's just. Yeah. Obviously, the worst. But it is challenging because the Autozam. I don't think I could daily. Uh no, probably not. I don't even know that you would fit in one. I've sat in a few, and I just fit. So, uh. And the Crown Vic, I knew a guy who was very enthusiastic about Crown Vic. Bradley Brownell. Was he? <laughs> he had one. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, no, it was a different person who just, like, was in love with them because they were quick for what they were. Oh, yeah. Comfortable. Bulletproof. Body on frame, so you destroy, you go off-roading it, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It'll drift. It'll drift, yeah. It's got a V8. V8 with tires with very little contact can, patches. I think you can tune that V8 pretty easily. Yeah. So there is that. But okay, so for 92. All right. What do we got? So we have the Alfa Romeo 155, which I don't recall which this is. Okay. It, oh, yeah. What? Okay. It's not it's the pretty not one. not the good one now. Uh, what is the UR? I don't know what the UR stands for in the Audi. U R S four. It's not no. It's not a. It's not standing for something. It's Ur, which means like the first. Oh, okay. Well, the first S four and S six. So like Ur Quattro is like the first. Oh, quattro. I got you. Yeah, of course. And those are good cars. So that's this pretty... is not the B five. So it's garbage. Eh, whatever. It's not the B five. This has these have so much overhang in the front. It is. But that's because that's where the engine is. And interesting. It is engine over the front wheels. Yeah. Ahead of the front wheels. Okay. So what do we got for B? Skip the ones we don't know. Bentley Brooklyn's. Yeah. There's two of them. There's something else we don't know. Ooh, Chrysler, Chrysler Con- Concord. You were the first one. This was the intrepid one? one. This was the intrepid yeah. one. Oh, oh, look yeah. Look at that two tone, yeah. with the. Is that a five? It's a six slot. Cab forward Family of the design. Jeep. Cab forward design. No one knows what that means. We don't know what that means. Yeah. The. Daihatsu Opti. Oh, here, here, there you go. Same year, Dodge Intrepid. Same year, Intrepid. I really liked these when they were new. I did too. A friend's dad had one. Uh, he got it brand new, and it, it was the first one with auto stick. Really? Which, basically, the gate looks like a penis. Yeah. Because you pull down the shaft, and then you can automatic shift through the balls. Okay, yeah. That's yep. where the gears are stored. <laughs> Oh, no. Okay, the Dodge Viper. I was hoping you were going to pick a Viper for I me. I know, but no. 92 Viper, it's good as it gets. Yeah, just as good. The Eagle Vision. Look at that. Yeah, that's also the third the... one in the Cab Forward trilogy. Yeah. Oh, my God, wait. Do you see this? Wait, here's the wait, thing. Wait, 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 hang on. Do you see this? The class? Full-size luxury car. The Eagle was referred to as a full-size luxury I have car. A, I have an Eagle Vision tangent. Whoa, yes? Um... So I just I have a distinct memory of being in fifth grade, yes, and being aware of the Eagle Vision, and being aware of the Eagle Talon, mm-hmm. and brainstorming on the playground oh while other kids were playing Foursquare. I was yep. brainstorming like, what is another name that you could have for an eagle that has the characteristics of a bird? the animal? <laughs> yeah, like what else could you have? That's true. The Eagle Egg. And then I found out that, like, so these were basically their last two models. Yeah, because they ran out of ways to name <laughs> they, ran <laughs> they ran out of names that were bird-related. Yeah. Uh, um, what but I think they've had ones in the 80s that were not bird-related at all. No. Yeah, they had, like, the Eagle AMC Pacer. Oh, yeah. Was that an Eagle? I feel like I'm pulling out of that out of no, the air, but it sounds um, very familiar. No, but it's a good effort. Let's continue. Yeah, whatever. Uh, uh, the Ethany on. MS-8. Ooh, what is that? Uh, it, I just looked at it and I cannot tell. I don't think there was a U.S. equivalent. Oh my goodness. It's like a Millennia 626. It looks like a Millennia protege. Look at this like crazy interior. Uh, It's beautiful. That is very optimistic JDM. I like to think that I know everything about Mazas from this era. So I like that it's something totally wild, wacky. I had no idea. That's really cool. Uh, So 456. Great car. Crown Vic. Crown Vic. Ford Falcon GT, which we didn't get. Australian. 
Mondeo. So is the Mondeo is like that's like the first contour. Um. Yes, except that we didn't get the first gen. Oh. So the okay. first gen looks very bad. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It and, looks like a less bubbly second gen. Yeah, and the second gen was cool. Well, that's the facelift second gen. Oh yeah, that is the facelift. Okay, I cool with an asterisk because I know that a lot of people don't enjoy this car, but the SVT Contour was kind of cool. I had experience driving the SVT yeah. Contour in period, and yeah. it's amazing. It was a great car. That was very cool. Uh, CRX, oh, the Del Sol. Del Sol. That's cool. Yeah. I don't know what... When I was a kid, I think I thought they were mid-engine. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks like a mid-engine car. XG220. XG220. You, you we had a discussion on our last trip where you were saying, would you rather have... Basically, would you rather have a Countach or an XJ220? Yeah. And I... I think I'm going to go with XJ220 still. I they just know. still want the Countach. I know. It's so much more iconic, but... But I think the Countach is probably more usable, too. I think, mm. I feel like the XJ220 would scrape everywhere. I mean, yeah, probably. But it's just so, like... It uh, is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And you can get tires for them now. <laughs> so, for yeah. the first time in, like, 20 years. Okay. Jeep Kia. Grand Cherokee. Uh, so, I drove it. I, my mom had a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Yeah. And I drove it as, uh, I when I had my learner's permit, I drove a Jeep Grand Cherokee. I would drive it to work yeah. all the time. Ours was yes. four liter straight six. Ooh. Laredo? Uh, Laredo. It was black with the gray trim. Yeah. Uh, four wheel drive. Yeah. It looked great. Yeah. I, it, was a, it was a neat, like now, and it was cloth interior. As, now, I would like, pull, yeah. now that car would be worth so much more than we probably traded it in for. Oh, I don't know. I think they're all like $100. Uh, I guess you're right. But uh, I, yeah. I be an interesting BRZO search, which should be a future segment, but yeah. like like Grand Cherokees with less than 50K. Oh, yeah. Or even 100. Or 100. Yeah. But I mean, nationwide, I'm sure there's some with like less than I 50. don't know. Yeah. Uh, maybe. But I like those when they came out and... I was, I don't even know, I was like in sixth grade, maybe? I didn't, I didn't really like the styling. I thought it was too weird, because I was such a nerd fan about the, about the regular Cherokee. Yeah. So I thought this was too bold. I thought, I, that looked so old to me, like when I was a kid. And so when this, like, future flush panel design car came out, I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. Okay, so. Oh, okay. How do you pronounce that? The Mark 8? Yes. I like the Mark 8. Oh, it's amazing. The Mark Lincoln the Mark tail 8 was neon. Yeah. And the, with, this was the pre LCI. Yeah, this I, is the LCI here with the uh, Yeah, so the front at. the front of the pre facelift looks better. I agree. It it's so it's like It's very cool. It's so sleek looking for especially for an American car. Like I of have, that era. I have a friend acquaintance, yeah. uh, Sajiv Mehta, yeah. who has one. He's an enthusiast for wow. Panthers. That's amazing. Very interesting man. Yeah. Um, he has like a beautiful Mark 8. Look at this interior. Like, look how swoopy it is. That's good. It was like a Rubbermaid prelude. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It is. Okay. So, oh, look at it. The, was this is the first year of the, oh, it's not the first no, year. No, first Sorry. Year. I mean, the first Chrysler. <laughs> it's Chrysler. Not Chrysler. A, it's something. We're going to skip this. Okay, fine. Whatever. Um, the Zito 6. I voted for Zitos. I hope you did, oh. too. <laughs> Don't blame me. I voted for Zitos. Uh, um, which was a miniature of Millennia. Mon- no, it was a Mazda 6. I know, but it looks like a... It's very elegant. Miniature it's very Millennia. Elegant. Okay. It had the old KLDE from my Probe GT. Oh. The Mercury Villager, which I... I, there, I know that this is kind of like the movement going on now, but I was obsessed with minivans back then. Mm-hmm. Like and the villager had the Nautica edition, oh, which I was right. like, "Whoa, that is amazing!" Yeah, um, I remember, and this is I'm very ashamed to say. At one point, I had the LinkedIn app on my phone, oh, and no, when I no. when I would open it, it would be like this street scene in New York, and all you could see was like this Mercury villager oh, at the God. front of the light. That is terrible. Yes. Oh, first year the Altima before they all turned into Uber cars. I liked the first gen. Oh yeah, when it came I, out, I didn't really like it then, but I like it now. A friend's dad had one of these in a stick. I like how there's one in like the worst condition ever on the yeah Wikipedia, Wikipedia page. Wikipedia like cover photos are always like, no no no, that's too nice. Don't use the factory photo. Use this Usually shitty it's in, like, street a Danish park one. Grocery store park. Yeah, lot. or this one that's that's run into a tree with blacked out taillights. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's go to the next thing. Yeah yeah. 
the quest, which was the villager, basically. Yes. Um, we don't need to see that. Um, oh, Panaz Roadster. Panaz Roadster started in debut in ninety two. You know, I saw one when I was in the woodlands. Oh, really? When I was driving I the Mustang, know. I saw a Panaz Roadster. That's and cool. I, and I've never seen one before. This is the first time in my life don't I've seen one. Know that I've ever seen one. I've seen Esperantes. Yeah, yeah. There are plenty uh, of those around. Are not there? Really, not really, but I there used to be one um like across from when I lived at Allen House, there was one like across yeah. the way that I would sometimes see it down like a street. Yeah. If I went for a run. But anyway, uh Porsche nine six eight. Nine six eight. I have driven one. Oh really? Yeah, when I went to Rodwood too. Oh right, duh. Okay. I drove one. And I I was driving it. It was like a 40-minute drive to Anaheim, and I popped yeah. up the headlights, and one went up, and then the other <laughs> one up really slowly after, and I was like, oh, no, did I fuck up these headlights? You just totaled it. Yeah. Okay, so... We put the, we put the, the club in it. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's so a bunch of Renaults that we don't know. We know the Twingo only by way of Top Gear, probably. Yeah, we don't know that Twingo. Yeah. The Zoom. Whoa. Ooh. Whoa, that is That's crazy. That's cool as hell. It's like a smart car, but smaller. Yeah. It looks like one of those um, push yes toy push pedal car. Not even pedal. You're, it's like a Flintstones car. The Fisher Price car. Yeah, Rover Two Hundred. Don't know what that is. It's bad. The Schuppen. Oh, the Schuppen. That was at Rad. Uh, that was at uh, Luke Colt last year. Oh, was it? The Schuppen. Yeah, it's the it's the road oh. car nine six two. Oh, I didn't remember that. You don't remember that from Luke Colt last year? No. It's a Schuppen nine six two. They made like four of them. Um, I yes. Know, yeah. Look at this. The Skoda Pick Dash Up. Ooh. Yeah. And uh, the Good Impreza. The Good Impreza. That is the Good Impreza. The GC8. Yeah. yeah. Don't know what the VVVO? Vivio? We may never know. No. Toyota. Caldina. Ooh. I don't know what that is. It's like an. Oh, it's a, like a wagon. It's like thing. an early Matrix. Yeah. The T100. Her Matrix. Yeah. Before there was a. Ooh, T100. Pre runner and a Tacoma, there was the T100, which. What did that. Did that become something else? Um, yeah, it became like uh, the pre runner and then the Tacoma. Okay. Eventually. Uh, and TVR Chimera. It's a Chimera. So I uh, submitted that, you know, on the BZ, BRZO. I, I yeah. created a search for TVRs yeah. in the US. And. And this came up in Florida, and I actually submitted it to BRZO. Wow. You know, because that's like a function in the Yeah, app. yeah, yeah. And they posted it to their Instagram today. <laughs> oh, nice. And, um, but it is, yeah, it's one of those things where I didn't know how to spell it, because I made a tweet about it, too. And I didn't, Honestly, like, how... I'm looking at the spelling, and I thought I was saying Chimera wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't, I was like, I was looking at Craigslist, and I was like, this is the one car where I'm going to give the person that wrote this the benefit of the doubt. Did they spell it how... right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, which, again, I think the one feature out of BR0 that I wish that it had was spelling variation. Oh. Because, like, so many cars, like, space spaces matter. Like, if you're searching a Mercedes. Well, you could put a question mark. Can you? Yeah. There is. I, I looked up what that search term what? is. You could put, like, a question mark, and it'll basically replace that character with either space or, or another character or whatever. Oh. But wait, but what about no space? I would just put a question mark. There's, if you look up what it is, it, it tells you in the search thing what um, the language of special search terms it uses. You can Google that, and you can find like a Boolean? few variations. Is it Boolean? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Don't know. Boo. Okay. We're going to cut this out. Boo. I was saying boo earns. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that is... I think that's a podcast. A podcast. Thank you for listening, and like and subscribe yeah, send us an email at newfor96 at gmail.com, spilled out, and uh, hit our Instagram. Indeed. Yeah. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye.